So I recently saw Paige from The Minimalist Booktuber and Kayla from Books and Lala do the bookshelf book tag and I wanted to jump on that bandwagon as well. This tag was created by A Wandering Mind. I will link her as well as the other two in the description down below, so make sure to go and check them out. Number one is how many bookshelves do you have? And I think that people conflate bookshelves with bookcases, myself very much included. I do this all the time. I think a bookcase is like the entire thing, whereas each individual level is a shelf. So if that's the case, I have two bookcases. One of them is irrelevant because I don't store any books on them. But then I have the one behind me, which has five levels or five shelves. And I've had this for 10 years. I got it in 2008 when I started at secondary school and it was initially a dumping ground because back then I never used to read for fun so I never had a book collection so I just used to dump all of my textbooks and notebooks and paper and stationery onto the shelf it was an absolute mess and disgrace but when I actually started collecting books in 2014 I think its purpose became renewed in case you're wondering if you're from Trinidad I got this in courts and I do believe that they still sell shelves like these so if you want one you could get one it's the best quality ever it's extremely sturdy and has a beautiful wooden finish which I think I might eventually paint white because all of the other furniture in my room is white. The next question is how many books are on your bookshelves? Right now I think I own about give or take 110 because I'm not sure. I tried counting it like a dozen times already and for some reason I just can't count. So it's around 110. Number three is how do you organize your books? And honestly, it really depends on when you're asking. I have a problem which is that I am addicted to rearranging my bookshelves which is why if you watch any of my videos you would notice that there's a different format and a different set of books behind me because I literally, I am the most indecisive human being on the entire planet. I cannot decide on an organization method that works best for me. As of right now, the first two levels are all of my red fiction books and they are organized by the author's last name, with the exception of the Harry Potter series because I like how it looks like at the end of the book line. The third and fourth shelf are all of my unread fiction books and they are organized in alphabetical order but also in the order in which I bought them. And then the very last shelf is for all of my non-fiction books read and unread in general. Question number four is what is the oldest book on your shelf? And the oldest book on my shelf is actually Paper Towns by John Green. As I said I only started collecting books in 2014 and this was among the first few books that I actually bought because this was what was very popular at the time on booktube. Naturally I did have a few books before this but I think I got rid of all of those so this by default is the oldest book on my shelf interestingly enough. Question number five is what is the newest book on your shelf and for me this is quite exciting because I saw this in the store a couple days ago and I was so excited when it was there because this is a book that I have been trying to get my hands on for a while and it is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. This has been blowing up all over booktube since it came out in February. It is the first in the Legacy of Orisha which is a new young adult fantasy series that is heavily based off of West African folklore and belief systems. I'm not exactly sure what the story itself is about and I don't really care. <laughs> I bought this partially because I wanted to get into fantasy and this seemed like something different and cool but mostly because I started following the author on Instagram and she is lit and I would buy a napkin that she writes on so that was really my um, factors involved in buying this book. I'm looking forward to it. I really hope I like it. Question number six is what is the longest book on your bookshelf? And for me that one is definitely order. Ooh! That is definitely Order of the Phoenix by Harry Potter. The Harry... Okay. <laughs> Wow. That is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix by J.K. Rowling. This is about 870 pages long. It's also the longest book that I've ever read. I'm not a fantasy reader, so I haven't read all of those books that are like over 1,000 pages long. So this is the longest book that I've ever read, and it's probably my least favorite in the Harry Potter series, to be quite honest. Although Professor McGonagall just slayed my soul and snatched every wig that I didn't even know that I had when reading this book. It still wasn't my favorite in the series, unfortunately. But still really good, because it's a Harry Potter book. Question number seven is what is the shortest book on your shelf and that one is going to have to be A Diary of Muslim Festivals by Hassan Karimala. Hassan Karimala is actually, well was actually my grandfather. He was an imam and he wrote this book which is A Diary of Muslim Festivals. Obvi. I've never read it um, and it'll be really weird to read it because I mean I didn't know him, he died way before I was born but I don't know, something about reading it just makes me feel like emotional, which is weird because I didn't know him, I know. And it's not like if you know he's going to write about how much he loved him. Grandpa, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> that was my crazy ass air conditioner. Um, what was I saying? Right, yes, this would be very emotional. I, I will read it, I'm sorry, okay? I'm, rest in peace. Oh my god, I love you. Okay, I'm going to put this back now. Question number eight. 
what is the most predominant genre on your shelf and that would have to be contemporary books in general YA contemporary mostly but I have a lot of adult contemporary as well because that's just the majority of what I read so it's the majority of what I own but recently I have been trying to make an effort to get my hands on some more sci-fi and fantasy because I really do want to expand my reading tastes question number nine is have you ever done a bookshelf tour no I have not done a bookshelf tour I just I don't have the energy for that at this point in my life I might do one eventually probably at the end of this year and make it like an annual thing okay so number 10 is to go on a random number generator and talk about a book that corresponds with that number and I am going to pick three numbers just to make it interesting actually no here's what I'll do I'll do it per shelf so each shelf has roughly around 20 something books so I'll just put between 1 and 20 and pick a book Okay, so for shelf number one, we have book number four, which is one, two, three, four. Oh, look at that. It's Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky L. Vitale. I've talked about this book a hundred times on my channel already since I read it in March. I loved it. It was a great book. I absolutely adored the movie, and I can see now why everybody cannot shut the fuck up about this book. So for shelf number two, I have to pick the 16th book. Do I even have 16 books? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16 is Harry Potter and the Order of Phoenix, so let's just do that again because I talked about that book already. Alright, 9. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9. Oh, it's The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. I have a review for this that I reviewed together with Beauty Queens by La Burberry. I really liked this book. It wasn't the best thing ever, but it was my first ever read of anything that was magical realism. And I was just in awe of the writing in this novel. It was beautiful, and I think I'm definitely due for a reread. So for shelf number three, we have to go with book number 13. Thirteen. It's a new book that I got recently. It's called The Art of White Roses by Viviana Prado Nunez. This book is actually set in Cuba in 1957 in the context of the revolution, I believe. And it's following a girl called Adela Santiago, and that's pretty much all I know about this. I actually have to read this for an exciting project that I'm working on that may or may not involve Caribbean young adult books. So keep your eyes peeled. For shelf number four, we have to go with book number nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. That one was The Vegetarian by Han Kang. This one is set in South Korea. I never read anything set in South Korea as yet, so I'm looking forward to this one. It's supposed to be very creepy. I heard it's not like horror, like demon horror, but it's like humans are gross type horror. So hopefully it doesn't scare the shit out of me. And for finally, bookshelf number five, the number is 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, and then 11. If you know where that song is from, then I will love you forever. That book was Light of God by Madevi M. Saw. This is like an inspirational book written by a local author in verse and poetry and that kind of stuff. I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars. I will talk about it more in my July wrap-up, of course. I didn't love it. It was like a three-star read, but as you can see, a lot of the things in it did resonate with me, so I'm ultimately glad that I did read it. Question number 11 is, do you have any fan merch or any other decorations on your bookshelf? No. And question number 12 is, show us your bookshelf. So, here you are. Alright, so here is a pan of the entire bookcase. The first thing I have on top of here is a cable box, um, and the Qur'an. So my grandfather, who was an imam, not the one who I talked about in this video, who may or may not be haunting me, but my other grandfather, my paternal grandfather, who was an imam, yes, both of my grandfathers were imams, I am a blessed child, he always said to keep the Qur'an elevated above any other book in the house, so that's why I keep it on top here. And then, as I said, these first two shelves are all of my red fiction books in order of the author's last name. So we go from A to B to C, I don't have anything with D, then we have G, I don't have anything with E, K, L, M, O, P, R starts down there, goes all the way to Y, and then, as I said, I have the Harry Potter series kind of separate. And then I have this little thing where I have a whole bunch of bookmarks and like bookish things and things that I just dumped in there. And then this is the first of my unread shelf. The first thing I have here is actually this fold-in basket that I keep all of my electronics in. And then these are all of the unread books that I got in 2018. And they are in order of the author's last name as well. And the yellow tabs mean that they are books that I got in 2018. And then the... Okay, Papa, we get the point. And these are my older unread books taking up the fourth shelf. So the purple tabs are the ones that I got in 2015, blue 2016, and green 2017. And they are in order of the author's last name within each year group, if that makes sense. And over here I have a trophy um, for 
club participation and a club that I never really participated in all that much but I mean thanks anyway. And then the final shelf here is non-fiction and I have a mix of different things. I have some textbooks and some Islamic spiritual books here. This is where I keep my grandfather's book um, and the In Light of God book that I showed just now and then I have my like regular non-fiction books and the unread ones I keep at the end here and they are all ones that I got in 2018 hence the green tabs. Then over here I have a basket where I keep my umbrella and the makeshift tripod that I'm using right now and then in the corner there I have my Percy Jackson series which I plan on most likely getting rid of which is why I just have it stuffed at the bottom there and that is my bookcase folks and there you have it that is it for my bookshelf book tag I will be tagging people who have rainbow bookshelves just because rainbow bookshelves are beautiful to look at when I'm going through my compulsive bookshelf reorganizations I oftentimes go to the rainbow bookshelf because it's just so pleasing and calming to stare at. I'll tag Chelsea from Chelsea Doling Reads, April from Aprilius Maximus, Marinez from My Name is Marinez, I think Natasha from My Reading is Odd also has rainbow shelves, Adriana from Perpetual Pages, I don't know if they have rainbow bookshelves but Adriana is a rainbow, oh my god grandpa, Adriana is a rainbow so I will tag Adriana as well and I don't know who else has rainbow bookshelves. Guess what, if you have rainbow bookshelves you're tagged by me. Tell everybody, tell your friends. Anyways, I'm going to end this video right now. My father and my cousin are watching the World Cup and they are screaming loudly and it's irritating the life out of me. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely, lovely day and until next time, inshallah, keep reading.